Hi, I'm Maria Thea Harris of LSOs. Welcome to So Organized Style Podcast. Stay listening. On So Organized Style Podcast, I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we record this podcast and pay respects to the elders past and present. Thanks for joining us on So Organized Style Podcast. This year, Making Zen is being run from the 15th to the 19th of May, and you can register at makingzen.com. Miriam Yellen of Miriam Textiles is here today so we can hear about her textiles background, what motivates her, and the workshop she's running at Making Zen this month. Today we've got Miriam, and she is one of the talented artists, and she's from the Netherlands. We managed to find a time during the day where we could get together and chat. So, Miriam, thank you for inviting me into your home. You're welcome. The Making Zen Online Retreat has been on now. This is We're coming up to the fourth time that Kate Ward mm-hmm. is running it. Did you present workshops at a previous one? Yes, I did one last year in May, and that was on a variation on the blanket stitch. And I enjoyed it very much. I enjoyed the creative energy in the retreat. And I was also very happy to participate in other workshops. And it was a great success. Did you get much feedback from the people in the Facebook group from your workshop? Oh, yes. Yes, a lot. Yeah. And I saw such amazing pictures of the things that people had made. And it felt like creativity was spreading like ripples in a pond. It was great. And in case listeners don't know, that Facebook page is full of the people who joined the Making Zen online retreat at the start, and they continue throughout the year to showcase what they've done. So it's very obvious that just because it's run during one week doesn't mean you can absorb all of that information in a week. They've taken advantage of the fact that you can have access to it for more than a week, you know, for a lifetime. Yeah, for a lifetime. I still every now and then get a message from someone or someone posts something and tags my name. And I look at, uh, every now and then what people are doing and what they're making. Yeah. 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 It's very nice to have such a group, people with the same interests and yet always an, just another twist on things. So it's also inspiring for me. So, Miriam, while we've got you here, I think it's important that we find out about your background. How did you get started? Well, I think I got started really young because the women in my family, my mother, my grandmother, my aunts, were always doing some kind of textile work. And I think I must have had a needle in my hands like when I was three or four years old. And I learned to knit, to do crochet, embroidery. My grandmother taught me tatting with a a shuttle, macrame, silk dyeing, a lot of things. And my most important education in textiles came from my family. And I was taught at home. And then, of course, the school, because I went to an all-girls school. That's very, very old-fashioned. But it was an uh, all-girls school, a Roman Catholic school. There were even a few nuns. And because we were were girls, it was thought important that sewing, knitting, etc. was on the schedule every day for at least an hour. So I did a lot of stitching, sewing, knitting, crochet. And that was always to make something useful. It could be like hemming a towel and uh, making potholders. I think I've made lots and lots of potholders in my time. And it also was important that you did things according to the rules. And I remember that, for instance, that a backstitch, if you were doing a backstitch, you had to do it over three threads of the fabric. Not two, not four, three threads. And I don't know why. I really don't know why. Because then all the backstitches would be of the same size and it looked neat. And I just couldn't do that. I was always messing up. And I think that for most of the time I was standing in line with a teacher so she she could judge my work and and inevitably told me to undo it and to do it again because, you know, it had to be three threads of the fabric. And so I was constantly undoing my work and I don't think I got anywhere. No, I can't remember anything that I made there that I was happy with or proud of. But luckily I had my family. 
And at home, there was more creativity. I do think my mother and her sisters and my grandmother also made things that were usable, like doilies, for instance. But they were also meant to be beautiful. They're, when I, you're knitting a sweater for you know, perhaps weeks, you want it to be a beautiful sweater. So they were, uh, had a lot of focus on beautiful yarns, nice colors, maybe adjusting the pattern a little bit. So it had to be functional, but it also should be beautiful. And I think that last part was what helped me to develop a love for textiles. So you found what motivated you was having things around you that were beautiful. That were beautiful, yeah. I still feel that I don't always make useful things anymore. I make just things before because they are beautiful as such, perhaps as wall art. Uh, but I used to make my own phone cover, for instance, to surround myself with pillow covers that I've made or indeed a phone cover or something like that. When you originally ran one of your workshops at Making Zim, what was your workshop about? Well, it was actually about one special stitch. My main technique that I use is embroidery. And it's a free form embroidery without a pattern. And I call it organic embroidery because it's inspired by patterns and shapes and colors in nature. And I found a way of using the blanket stitch, a variation that's also sometimes called the honeycomb stitch. And it, indeed, it has this shape of the little hexagons that you find in a honeycomb. And you can apply it in a free way. And then it can represent cell structures, insect wings, dragonfly wings, for instance, have that pattern. So I didn't teach an actual project. I just taught that stitch because it's very versatile and you can use it in combination with other stitches for all kinds of uh, projects. And this time for Making Zen, what will your workshop be about for us? Again, a way to apply a certain stitch. Yeah. Not necessarily because I think, oh, that's my theme, so I'm going to do that again. But this time it's about the stacked running stitch. The, the name running stitch, of course, is in it. Running stitch is a very simple stitch. And the stacked running stitch isn't difficult either. You just stack rows of a running stitch. That's basically it. You can create patterns with it that you can also find a lot in nature and all kinds of wave and ripple patterns, and also patterns that you can see in striped animals, for instance. Or yeah, There are many examples of it that I will also show in the workshop. It's a bit my thing, how to recreate patterns that you see in nature into stitch. And it has similarities because you let the pattern grow stitch by stitch, so also a very organic process. A, a real slow stitching where you see the pattern emerge. And I'm going to teach all the ins and outs of how you can create these patterns in an intuitive way. So without a pre-designed pattern, you follow the flow of your stitches and then the pattern will grow on the fabric. And it's a very meditative stitch. It sounds like the experience that you had as a child when it came to embroidery has helped you create something that is a much more positive experience with embroidery? And that was a, a bit of a transition because for years and years, I thought I, I'm not just not good at it. Because if, uh, stitching very neatly and, and always make ex the exact same sized stitches, I just couldn't do it. And that made me feel like, oh, no, th this is not for me because I'm not neat, I'm not precise. Somewhere over the years, that, that turned is okay, I can't do that. That's not what I can do, but it's also not what I want to do. I want to do a more free way of stitching, and I want to play with colors, and I want to play with shapes, and I want to play with patterns. So, yeah, I managed to feel the childlike joy in creating something yeah. without all the, well, impediments from... You need to do this, you need to do that, all the rules and laws. And that has been very f a very freeing experience. And I hope to that I can help people to do the same. Because I often 
notice that a lot of people are worried, worried about stitching without a pattern. Oh, I'm not so creative. I can't do that. Am I doing it right? And lots of insecurity. And I feel that's a shame because this is something that really everybody can do. Mm. And the way you do it, your style, that's okay. That's your unique style. And if that's a very balanced and sophisticated style of more wild and free, it doesn't matter. It's your style. And don't be worried about that you were taught to do things a certain way and that was difficult or you thought, well, what somebody else is doing, oh, I can never do that. It's way beyond my possibilities. I think everybody has more than enough creativity to enjoy creating things in textiles. Would you be offering any additional workshops? I'm offering ebook. I've written an ebook about basic stitches in organic embroidery. And there are six basic stitches in it, plus two additional techniques, couching and applique. And not only you can uh, learn how to do the stitches, the technique, but also how you can apply them in organic embroideries, apply them in a way that you can use them to imitate or replicate images from nature. And if people are curious to see what it is that you do before they get to Making Zen, where can we find you online? I'm on Instagram as Miriam Textiles and also on Facebook. I have an Etsy shop with tutorials and this ebook, for instance, and that's also called Miriam Textiles. I also have a Patreon page and most posts there. Patreon is a platform for creators where they share exclusive contents with their uh, subscribers. I also have a page there. And there are some public posts and most posts with tutorials and techniques and research are uh, accessible for my patrons. I've also participated as a, just as a participant in the Making Zen retreat in October, was I think it was. Yeah. And what I like so much about the retreat is that people are at a certain point are going to mix the techniques and the ideas that they have from different workshops. And then I see that they make a pouch that was in another workshop and they use the stitch that I have taught or they combine it with applique from another workshop. So it was like a real creative buzz. So I think that it's not just about the one workshop that you like from, oh, I want to have that workshop, but it's about all the workshops together and how they influence each other and how people inspire each other. And I think that, that was really, really special and a really extra bonus compared to just following one online workshop. Yeah, the, the community was very special within the Making Zen retreat. And in the deep, weeks after. If you in the Facebook group, you see them come through on your feed all the time. All the time. And the buzz continued. Yeah, yeah that is it's very special about the Making Zen. And I also love that... There are options. You can participate for free. That's unique. And you can also buy the all access pass. So you have possibilities. You can choose how much time can I spend on it? How much can I afford? And in fact, it's accessible and affordable for yeah, pretty much everyone. If you have an internet connection, you can participate. That's right. That's all you need is a connection to connect with other people who are creative. Yes, I'm a big advocate for the making Zen. I'm really enthusiastic about it. But of course, it's great that people, for people who, who have a problem affording this, that it's also available for free. Yeah, it's a, bit par a big part of why I'm motivated to, uh, to teach here. Miriam, thank you for giving me your time today to come onto the podcast to tell us about your textile art background and what we can look forward to taking part in at Making Zen in May. Thank you for inviting me, Maria, and I'm happy to participate. Thank you. This episode of Soul Organised Soul Podcast was produced by me, Maria Thea Harris, with permission of Kate for the Making Zen Online Retreat, sound by bensound.com. Making Zen Online Retreat is coming up on the 15th to the 19th of May, and you can register on the website at makingzen.com. 
You can subscribe to Soul Gunner Style Podcast but with an S not a Z on all good podcast apps. Make sure you go back and listen to the previous Making Zen Textile Artist Podcast so that you can get a feel for the depth of textile art workshops that the Making Zen Online Retreat provides the sewing community. I hope you can help us with the production of this podcast through our Patreon account. We look forward to seeing you at Making Zen in May. Stay safe, everyone.